Hi, it's Malcolm from Macrospray. If you've got a foam lance like this that's not spraying correctly or it's leaking from the front here, uh, this is how you fix it. This is the original Kranzel foam bottle that they used before they made their own with the embossed bottle. It's the Sutner ST73, as it says it on there. Um, it has an adjustment, one, two, three, four, five on the side and it has the adjustment for horizontal and vertical spray pattern. This is how to fix it. So if there's any water or chemical coming out of here or it's not spraying correctly through there, I'll show you how to fix it. The couplings on the back could be anything. This is quick release, uh, they could be M22, they could be for different models, Karsha, Nilfisk, whatever. But they all work pretty much the same way. In this coupling there's an Allen key slot to get this coupling out and that would just unscrew. Sometimes they could be Loctited in there and it can be quite tight. So the next thing you want to do to strip it down, just take the bottle off, we don't need that, and the actual tube itself. But there is a little screw here. If we take that one out. Once this little grub screw is there, just don't lose anything. Uh, I will split everything up. You can't obviously get that out now uh, without pushing it from that side, and that means stripping everything down. But if you use your coupling, just screw it in, and then it should just pop out. So this is your main mechanism. This is the, the thing that creates all the foam. Uh, this is what's gonna be wrong with it. I will show you how to strip the rest of it down a little bit later on, but 99% of the times it's something to do with this little bit, which is just that screw. And sometimes you don't even need to take this out. So that's that coupling there. Okay, so we have a nozzle in there with a little flat screwdriver. This should not be tight to get out. And if it is really, really tight, it could be lock tighted, which is wrong to lock tight them. It's a tiny little nozzle and it's got a little o-ring on there. You've got to make sure that that o-ring is okay and not damaged too much. Um, this one looks a little bit squashed but I'm sure it'll seal okay. The next thing is in between the little slot there is a tiny little hole. That is your main high pressure nozzle. These come in different sizes but if that's blocked with a little tiny piece of grit or a little tiny stone in that hole it's not going to work. If this o-ring's gone it's going to pass water through that o-ring and not through the nozzle and then the venturi is not going to work inside there. So you're going to make sure that's completely clear. The next thing really is this uh, grate really I suppose, little mesh. Um, all the high pressure and the chemical goes through there and it foams it up to spray it out the front of the nozzle. There's nothing else in this here. Should be able to see completely straight through it. The only o-ring is on here, on the front, and then you've got two o-rings in these recesses here. So it'll just strip absolutely everything down. Usually it'll just be a blockage in there, or this mesh needs changing away you go. Everything else in this bit is stainless steel so it's never really going to rot. But I'll put it in the way it's supposed to be. I'll take all the o-rings off and I'll completely rebuild it as well. I would normally, if, if somebody sent this into repair, I would normally take all the o-rings off in which case you can always just check them before it goes back on. Now this plastic bit here just clips on. You shouldn't really need to take it off, but if you need to, just rock it backwards and forwards and it will just come off. There's absolutely nothing inside. See any white in there. Nothing inside. All these holes are clear. That fits there. And then again, this bit of machine stainless uh, or aluminium, I think it's probably stainless. Grub screw, that doesn't go anywhere, it just holds that little grub screw which I've lost. There it is. And a 
hole all the way through it. As long as that's clear and unblocked, you're good to go. And that is pretty much it. The only other thing you might need to do, which is very, very rare, because at the end of the day, you can see all the way through there as well. There's nothing in there at all. But I'll show you how to take it apart anyway. So there's two pins on the front. If you just get something to push the pins out enough to get some purchase with some long nose pliers, that should just be able to pull these out. So as you need a little bit of, it's better with a, a proper pin to push these out, but hey ho, I ain't got one with me. Pull them pins out this just pops off now there's nothing in there the only thing that's in there is the actual the fins that you can if you want to really you can take them out i don't know how hard they are to get back in but maybe you could replace them or at least straighten them up never had to do that but hey ho there is a little spring clip that holds this in place which you should be able to just prise away the screwdriver. Don't lose that. Normally they ping off and you never see them again. And then that should just pull away. And that is it. Now again, there's absolutely nothing in there. Nothing should be in the holes. Have an O-ring right at the end of that tip. That is literally just to give that a little bit more of uh, friction so it doesn't move rather than seal any water or chemical coming out. Probably could take that off. Um, just bear me a sec. Let's just see what's behind here. I never have to take this off, so I wouldn't really advise to do this if I just check it. So we got a Non return nipple spring. And there's nothing else in there. I'm going to sound a tad again. What is that? Every day is a learning day. There's a little valve in there. And that is like that. So there is an O-ring on there. But I can't understand why it's got that. Unless that's for the dosage. The dosage, you reckon, Tess? What's that? Oh, Clark, was he talking to you? <laughs> no, that's not. I don't know what that's for. <laughs> no reason for it to be there. I honestly couldn't tell you. <laughs> not really an expert. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to call that a restrictor of some sort. Um, I don't know what it's there for. I think if you took it out, I don't think it would make too much difference. It could be a non-return valve for the chemical not to, or 
the water not to go into the container but it shouldn't do anyway because of the restriction unless you had a problem anyways that is the foam lance completely stripped down uh, once again you really only need to check this nozzle and this to make sure that's not damaged apart from that you shouldn't really need to touch anything else well let's have a go at uh, putting it all back together so I've never done this one which is going to be more a struggle than I thought it would be that done. Don't forget the o-ring on this. Which I don't need to put that on yet. Because I need to put that on. That's that done. The spring clip can be a, a little bit of a a pain to put on. Just gonna get one side in and clip all the way in like so turn that until it feels like it clicks in place and it only turns that way and we'll just put the pins back in just Sometimes they're a lot easier to get in and out. Uh, these are quite tight. I would normally get them flush so they're all perfect. I'm going to start marking it otherwise. So just make sure the dosage is on the one to five and it all works. Then we can start reassembling. So we got the little mesh the o-ring over the top of that one if any of these o-rings is are gone or damaged it will uh, leak from somewhere that just clicks in place nothing else nothing spectacular and then the o-rings sit into the grooves the second one Make sure that they're not kinked or damaged in any way when you put them back. Got the nozzle. Again, make sure the O-ring's okay and don't over tighten it. This needs to be on. Once you've got that, you just need to line it up with the hole for the grub screw. Grub screw in, dab a lot tight or PTFE on whatever coupling that you use, and tighten that up. If you need to tighten it a little bit more, you've got Allen key in the back end, pipe on, screw the bottle on. And that'll be good good to go so thanks for watching to the end if it helped you give me a thumbs up uh, subscribe if you want to see any more of this type of uh, video see you in the next one if uh, if anybody knows in the comments below what this actually does let me know um, I haven't done any research on it I've never had to take it off well, usually when there's a, a return spring in there, it's it's a, uh, a valve of some sort. But it's a straight through valve. 
So regardless of whether that is at the top or if it was compressed, there's no reason for it to be there. So if you know what that is, let me know in the comments below.